is up friends i'm a little sleepy and cold this morning and i'm getting ready for class and i thought i would show you some of the foot mobilization i'm moving quick because i am genuinely getting ready for class so i don't have a ton of time but i thought i would just talk you through my morning foot mobility stuff i think you can see my feet which are the main the main actors in this play um if i were not talking let's go slower i'm gonna do lots of soft, initially just mobilizing ankle circles. In class, I talk about scooping ice cream with that foot and generating as large and muscular a circle as you can, feeling the muscles up your calf. If we have our legs crossed, for example, we can feel with our fingers and against our other leg the puppet strings of the muscles that cross into our calf or cross from our calf to our foot. I'm going to do some point and flex which I am emphasizing at the end with a little toe. So this starts as the feet get warmer. First, it might just be a kind of stiff ankle movement, right? Just a little plantar dorsiflexion at the ankle. Not a lot of squeeze under the arch. I have high arched feet and they get tired and they get stiff and I've trained them mightily to be strong, but that doesn't mean they're ready every day, especially if I haven't worked them hard the day before or they're cold. Right? Our feet respond to different things. So at first, again, I'm not doing this at max squeeze. This isn't a straightening set. If it were, if you've been to my class, you know, we're going to really put some tension. We're going to like a fist with the ball of that foot. This is really just go through the motions, let out the snap, crackle, pop. And now I'm going to make it a little more toe articulated. So I'm going to push into the heel, feel my quads, feel my uh, shins, which we also talk about a lot in class, the importance of strengthening your shins and the you know, dorsiflexor system, the extensor of the toes, we could think, not just the flexor, and our calf, right? So we want both, get them both nice and primed. Nice and strong, push through the ball of the foot, hold those toes back, wiggle, wiggle, you know, you know it doesn't have to be yoga, toe yoga. People make all this fun with like their toes, and that's great if you can do it, but if you can't, don't let it frustrate you. Just moving and spreading your toes is awesome and it feels really good. It's going to wake up muscles in your feet. Now I'm going to do some inversion and eversion. I'm just kind of making this up as I go, guys. The idea is to get the feet in all of their ranges, or, you know, this is not going to be represented of all the different ranges. But just do here, I'm going to make, make some rainbows down up into some eversion with combine, right, our ankles and our, our ankle complex. Right, so not just what we think of as the ankle, but the subtalar joint below it, which is the bone that is between your tibia and your heel bone. So looking at the, the base of support of your foot, that is a triplanar movement joint. It's pretty spectacular the way that moves. So we want to make sure that we preserve that mobility, and we also want to make sure that we warm it up in all those ranges before we ask our feet to bear weight. So this is typically something I would do before I get out of bed, if I can, some variation of this, right? Wiggle that toes, make some circles, get those feet warm before you ask it to, to bear your body's weight for the rest of the day. So I'm going to go, um, this is another way I like to do this, is one at a time. And if you have a foot that's particularly stiff, rigid, immobile, then doing it one at a time is great because it lets your brain, right? So movement starts in the brain. So that immobility could be arthritic, muscular tissue base, but it's largely going to have a relationship to a neuro basis. So the brain isn't help, isn't firing those muscles well to help the move, and then the tissue at the receiving end of those signals has also probably had some decondition, whether it's the bony surfaces, the connective tissue, or the muscles themselves, right? So give it a chance. My feet already feel better. I feel this nice warm glow in my shins and my calves. I'm ready to go jump on my trampoline for 10 minutes, bounce on my trampoline, get some, get the, whew, the puffiness out of my face, get some fresh air in my garden, and I'm looking forward to class this morning, so I'm happy foot health. Oh, one last thing I was just going to show, if you have very stiff feet, you can wedge your toes between them, and if it's hard for you to move your own ankle, doing some of this, right? You want to squeeze your toes, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, guys. I was doing the least intensive version, but you know. Pull them under a little. Maybe you have a lot of tightness here, and it would feel good to do that, right? If there's more aggressive ways, you can sit on your feet, sit, you know, on your knees with your feet under your toes, uh, or your toes under your butt. Sorry, now I'm rushing. <laughs> 
you can wedge your fingers between your toes, which is kind of hard for me. I have very tight feet, although I stretch them and they're much improved. But you can wedge your fingers between your toes and that feels great. I have toe spacers I use to do this. Um, even just trying to wedge that actually feels really, really good. Give them a spread. So maybe I should have, I should have shown that during the principal part of the video. But moving your own foot with the strength of your hand, which we have more control over, might start to give you access to the movement that you can't generate, you know, on your own um, from your brain like we were just talking about. And the warmth of your hand, now I'm thinking, feels really good if your feet are cold and stiff. So maybe there's some pain relief value in that as well. And also, you're teaching your joint this movement pattern so that it can ultimately do it on its own and maybe they'll give you more control. Final thing I want to say is, um, you know, having warm feet isn't just injury preventative for warm and mobile and loose and strong feet. It isn't just important for um, our foot health, which it very much is, but all the reasons that our foot health and our foot strength and mobility and stability, see other videos, um, is critical for our full body health and condition. And a big part of that is actually balance, right? So if your feet are stiff, and rigid, then they're not going to be this beautiful adaptive. I mean, you've got lots of bones in the foot. It's not a pancake surface on the floor. If it's rigid and stiff, it's going to be like trying to teeter on a hard uh, surface against the ground, as opposed to something that moves and gets some traction against the ground, right? The way it's designed to sort of be able to mobilize. It's designed to m stabilize for energy propulsion, because you wouldn't want it to just collapse into the floor like jello if you're trying to get it to launch you with all the muscles you have, right? This is, becomes a lever off which we push ourselves through space. But it also needs to be able to be soft and adaptable, negotiating different terrain, shock absorption, our suspension system starts in our feet, our exploration of the world starts in our feet. We don't just fist, you know, fist palm, or whatever that, case, uh, that expression is, um, face palm? Yeah, not face palm. Face, we don't just face palm the ground, right? We want to explore it carefully. So we want our feet to have all, for all these reasons, to be adaptable. All right, now I'm going to be late for class. But I hope this was enjoyable. I hope your feet feel great. And see you soon. <laughs>